Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel and all new viewers, I have made a detailed video on Nikon D3400 and also compared the D3400 with the D3500. The links are below. Let's now talk about the D3500 in a bit more detail. The camera is the last version of the Nikon D3000 series. It's called an entry-level DSLR. If this means amazing image quality, easy handling, somewhat reduced number of options and affordability, then I would agree with this label. The trend with this line of cameras has been to become ever smaller to compete better with the mirrorless hybrid cameras. The competition is fierce indeed, and you need good reasons to want to buy a relatively simple camera with a mirror these days. Some of the reasons would be affordability, availability of all kinds of lenses from the past, and of course the image quality again. That's as good as ever. This camera can behave a bit like a hybrid camera too. If you press the LV or live view button, the mirror goes away and you see what you photograph on the screen. This function is activated during video too. I like this camera a lot. It's really simple to use, very non-intimidating for a novice I would say. The menu is self-explanatory and it feels so right in the hand. The grip is getting deeper and wider with every new model and this one's a bullseye. You can take over 1500 images with one battery full. What's not to like? For a DSLR, the D3500 is very small. 97 mm tall, 124 mm wide and 70 mm deep. It weighs only 365 grams and is made of plastic. This is no ordinary plastic though. It's very durable and scratch resistant. I've used tripod many times and no scratches at all under the camera. The bottoms of some other cameras are more delicate. The buttons are ergonomically positioned. I miss that you don't have a button on the body to switch between automatic and manual focusing. You do this in the menu. I also miss that there's no single large exposure compensation button to turn. You need to press a plus minus button, turn the dial and look at the screen or through the viewfinder all at the same time to change exposure compensation. This can be too clumsy when you need it fast. All other buttons I like. Nikon tends to put out realistic colors, so you may sometimes want to add some boost to the colors. This is where the vivid setting comes in. I miss that Nikon doesn't have more film simulations than the 7. Standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, flat. But this is no problem if you're willing to play with the RAW files. The RAW files include deep information for some amazing manipulations. The APS-C sensor has 24 megapixels and this is a good number to keep the users happy. Some might like this number to be smaller to get even better low light performance and even lower noise. But with an entry level camera they cannot reduce the number because people tend to pay attention to it. The performance of the camera is already amazing as it stands. No reason to change much here. I love the image quality of this camera. It tends to overexpose a bit so my default exposure compensation is often minus one third. Usually the image quality depends mostly on the lens and not so much on the camera. The lens is very adequate I think, rather typical with its 18 to 55 mm focal length range and a 3.5 to 5.6 f-stop range. It's not a bokeh lens, but it's nice and sharp. All plastic, including the mount and no controls apart from the focusing ring. F-stop selection and image stabilization is controlled through the body. The image stabilization works really well by the way. It's needed because the camera body has no image stabilization, just like it doesn't have a motor for driving lenses. Luckily, the lens has such motor built in, as it has optical image stabilization built in. I've reviewed this lens in another video, see the link below. The lens has a lock button. To start the camera, you have to do two things. You need to turn the camera on, and then you have to hold down the lens button and turn the lens to the 18mm or above position. If you don't turn the lens, you cannot photograph and you also cannot see many of the menu options. The lens and the camera together make a very small and compact DSLR. 
This camera has no sensor cleaning by shaking system. When you see dust, you need to put the mirror away via the menu and use an air blower on the sensor. It also doesn't have an external microphone port, so the sound in your video is going to be horrible. Uh, please pardon my French. This is the main problem I have with the D3500, and this is what makes it the photographer's camera and not a video camera. The video itself is not bad at all, but it could benefit from more dynamic range depending where you come from. But really, I'm not complaining about the video quality. You can do only HD and the maximal frame rate is 60. In my D3400 video, I accidentally said that the D3400 could only do 30 frames per second. This was a mistake. I accidentally said the wrong word. I'm correcting it now. Both of these cameras offer 60 frames per second and their video qualities are the same. This is also true of their photo capabilities. The D3500 has Bluetooth for interacting remotely with the camera, no Wi-Fi. You can use your smartphone to shoot with the camera via Bluetooth. It's called SnapBridge here. What I pay more attention to is the screen. It has no touch sensitivity. It's okay by me, other than I'd like to use the screen for focusing when in live view. You've got 11 focus points on this camera, which is a pretty modest number. Ideally, I'd like to have more, but focusing is fast and accurate. The lens is silent too when focusing. The screen is fixed and does not turn or tilt. Again, usually not a problem, but it's nice to have a tilt screen when the camera is near the ground. This often happens during macro photography. The built-in flash is weak, but it will do okay as a filler flash. If you're into flash photography, you'll probably get a proper flash. The T3500 accepts an SD card and has one card slot, as you'd expect from this kind of camera. I'm not going to talk about every menu item here, but I will bring out some. The menu is nice and easy to understand. You're not going to refer to the manual very often. I like the active D-lighting option. This is similar to HDR. It works when shooting JPEG and it will improve shadow and highlight detail. In essence, it will flatten the curve of your photo. I'd recommend to turn it on. You can choose ISO sensitivity control, set your preferred ISO and ISO limits. By the way, the minimal ISO is 100, maximal is 25,600. Then you have a lot of white balance presets. There is vignette and auto distortion control. Video menu is very minimal. Frame rate, video quality, high versus normal, microphone sensitivity, wind reduction. You can choose from a long list of languages, change the screen brightness. The self timer can do 2, 5, 10 or 20 seconds and lets you additionally choose the number of shots. You can enter your own name to appear in the metadata of the photo. You can also correct for flicker, 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Choose based on the electrical system frequency of your country or leave it at auto. The AEL slash AFL button can be assigned to work as an exposure lock or focus lock button. Manual focus via focus ring can override autofocus. There is a submenu listing your recent selections so you could access them quicker. The other interesting submenu is the retouch menu. This lets you trim or retouch images on the camera. Do I recommend this camera? If you want a DSLR and value small size and great image quality, but don't care for too many bells and whistles, this camera could be for you. Especially if you already own Nikon lenses. If you are into video a lot, this camera is probably not for you. If you are a casual shooter and want a good deal on a very capable camera that has Nikon quality, again this could be your camera. Before you buy, consider the pros and cons of getting a hybrid camera instead because the photography world is turning more in that direction. Ask yourself, what is the benefit of the mirror for you? You may very well have very good reasons. And don't forget the amazing photo quality this camera can produce. I hope you liked my quick overview of this wonderful camera. If you consider giving me a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel, I'd be very happy. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my future and past videos. Happy photography to you. Bye.